Good morning. Good morning. Well, I'm the new guy on the block. <laughs> Pastor Peter uh, ended his uh, pastorate with you last week, and I'm Pastor Ron Garrell. I just finished an uh, interim position at Long Lake Lutheran Church in Sorona. I was there 24 months, and then before that I was a chaplain in Chisago City, Minnesota. I was there for about 20 years, and before that I served at uh, Bethel Dover Lutheran Parish, and then I s began my ministry at Stanley Lutheran Church in um, along 29. Anyway, I'm here to guide you in your approach to ministry in the next couple of months as you decide the direction you want to go. I'm an interim pastor. I'm not your permanent pastor. I know you had to get used to a lot of different folks. Anyway, I live in Chatec. Uh, I've been married to Luann for 40... I got to guess. No, I got to guess. <laughs> she's, she's watching, by the way, so over years. And I've been a pastor since 1974. We have three grown children, and I have seven grandchildren, and I'm really happy to be here with you. So I hope to get to know you. As you know, uh, if you introduce yourself to you, I probably not going to remember your name. I can't remember all the names at once, but I will gradually get to know all of you. So bear with me. Um, you're all here. You got an extra hour of sleep, right? So this congregation doesn't fall asleep during sermons? <laughs> You're all laughing, so we'll see what happens. <clears throat> there will be a children's sermon this morning, and I plan to have children's sermons on, on Sundays. Uh, got a lot... as you go forward as well. Lots of, lots of activities. This morning is called All Saints Sunday because we are remembering and honoring those that lived and worshipped with us and have died this last year. During the service, uh, we will be naming the person, ringing the bell, and lighting the candle and then a white flower will be brought to the families in the pews at that time. So a lot of activity to honor those that have uh, died this last year in this congregation. <clears throat> During the, uh, the last church service, we know that many of you have had loved ones uh, wherever they live that may have died. And so we want to provide time for you during that last hymn to come up and honor whoever you want by picking up a candle, lighting it, and putting it in the bowl. And so, you know, we're on this journey of life and death. God gives us so much time, and then we depart to be with him is really important. So if you've got somebody that you want to remember, come on up during that last hymn, okay? Don't be afraid to do that. Well, we have opened the church office here. No longer at uh, Dallas Lutheran, our own church office. And so this week has been, uh, has been a challenge. We had to organize our systems and unpack things and see if our uh, computers are working so uh, uh, things may not have gone really smoothly, but we hope to iron everything out as we go forward. So bear, bear with us. And um, the, the bulletin may be changing a little bit. Uh, maybe a couple errors in there. Anyway, we're getting our feet on the ground, so just bear with us as we work on, uh, on our office systems together. So we will be... Uh, Rhonda and I will be here on uh, Tuesday morning, and she plans to be here on, on Wednesday as well. Already I have filtered different things that I'm engaged in, you know, in the community and about, but um, she will know what my schedule is if you need to get a hold of me. And then your 
newsletter that comes out has my information for phone number. And you know how it is? You get so many phone calls, especially this time of the year, from people that want to sell you uh, Medicare insurance. So I've, I've been filtering things out. But if you text me, you know, with your name and your phone number, I'll, I'll get back to you, all right? So that's my way of uh, knowing that uh, you can get a hold of me and I can get a hold of you. Tuesday's our church council meeting at 6.30. Wednesday at 6.30 is confirmation class. Thursday is quilting at 9 o'clock. 1.30, we will have the uh, women's gather Bible study, and I will be leading that 1.30 on Thursday. I want to thank... Um, Dave Driver and Rick Broughton, who have the technical genius to help us get organized. And uh, they've been learning, too, a little bit about helping us set things up. So any, any other announcements that you'd like to make? None. Yeah. Okay, Pastor Randy Olson will be here. Okay. David. That's on Tuesday night? Okay. And I know I haven't met all the deacons yet, but I think it's good that we plan a deacons meeting and please talk to me after the church service and uh, get our thoughts together about the ministry part of our, of our congregation. All right. I want to say hello to everybody who is live streaming. You are part of this congregation, even though you're not here physically. But you know what? We want to, you to know that we miss you and we love you and hope you'd come back. So, we are going to begin by panning this congregation. I want you to wave to everybody who's watching, and with that wave, invite him to come back to church. So, Rick, we're going to start over here. Okay, turn around and wave. Wave. Okay, over here. Turn around and wave. Okay, this is our, come on, right? Come on to church. We're open up again. We love to have you worship with us on Sunday morning. Wonderful. Let's begin. Let's stand and sing our opening hymn for all the saints.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. So lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, <clears throat> now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines and a rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, and he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is from Psalm 24. Please read responsibly. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who dwell therein. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord, and who may stand in God's holy place. They shall receive blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from God of their salvation. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will... Be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. And he will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. 
for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is found in the 11th chapter of St. John, beginning with verse 32. Please rise. Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? <clears throat> they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took the stone away. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always heard me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they might believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come up. I'm going to sit in this chair. You want to gather around? I know I'm new. You're not used to me. <laughs> there we go. Hi. Are you used to sitting on the stairs? I'll turn my chair up a bit. Well, thanks for coming up. Oh, I have brought... This is a flower, but what's happened to it? What's going on with this flower? Is it pretty? You think it's pretty? <laughs> it used to be prettier. It's dying, isn't it? Kind of wilting. You know, we... this down here. A flower, and it's still blooming, isn't it? Still nice and white, and uh, do you want to smell it? Does it smell good yet? Yeah. So, isn't it interesting that flowers don't last very long. 
you know, you pick them and you cut them and you enjoy them and then they die, don't they? And that's what's going to happen to this flower. It's beautiful now, but it's going to die too. Well, in our story today that Pastor read on the gospel, there was a man named Lazarus. Can you say Lazarus? Lazarus. And he died. He was alive. He had a brother and a sister, and he was alive, but he died. And there was sadness. There was sadness when Lazarus died. We get sad when uh, loved ones die, don't we? But Mary asked Jesus if he would come and raise Lazarus. Oh my goodness, raise him from the dead. Raise Lazarus from the dead. Did you know that Jesus says, I, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He gives life. And in our story today, he actually raised Lazarus from the dead and he lived again. Wow. You know, there's something about Jesus that he has power over death. And that's our hope, that someday, through our baptism and our faith in Jesus, that we will rise again to new life. And so death is never going to hold us. But we're honoring some folks that died in our congregation this past year, and uh, we're offering them a flower. We're remembering them. But you know what? They were baptized, and they had faith, and someday Jesus is going to raise them again. That's our hope, that death is never going to hold us again. As Jesus rose from the dead on Easter, he promised that this would happen to us someday too. Isn't that great? Okay, I'm going to have a little prayer. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the life and the hope that he brings to us. And as he raised Lazarus, we have hope too that we will see new life again after we die. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thanks for coming up. You guys are courageous. So my message today is called, Who is a Saint? Anyway, and I'm going to reflect on this story of the gospel lesson, and you heard me tell the children's story, so we're going to take off from that, and we are going to think about our sainthood. Yes, our sainthood. And I just want to say, I'm looking out, I don't know your names, but here's a bunch of saints. Wonderful. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you brought us into your kingdom through holy baptism. You declared us forgiven. And because of your love for us, you sustain us in this life and give us hope of everlasting life. And so we pray that through our faith and through our worship, we would sustain this blessed call to be your followers, your saints in the kingdom today and the kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord the Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We don't usually refer to us as saints. I don't hear people going around, do you know I'm a saint? We don't usually hear that. But believe it or not, in our understanding of sainthood, we are saints. You are saints. We are all saints in God's kingdom in virtue of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross through our baptism and our faith. We are saints. That is a pretty wonderful calling, isn't it? 
when you think about it, that you are a saint? Well, I found a definition of sainthood by Charlie Brown. This is from the comic strip. This is what he describes as a saint. You ready? Are you ready? Say yes. yes. Okay. Someone who is kind, someone who doesn't smoke, someone who smiles a lot, eats sensibly, avoids cavities, and sends overseas packages early. Charlie Brown's definition. Now, our definition, in a general sense, we might say, well, a person, you know, they're, they're a nice person. When, when we kind of categorize it, kind of slow, kind of pull it down, oh, they're a nice person. Actually, there are hundreds of stories of saints that can be called from the Bible and from church history. And you notice in our Bible, we have those that wrote the books of the Bible. We call them what? Saint John, Saint Mark, Saint Luke, Saint Matthew, right? And in our mind, we elevate them because of the temperature that they had in love for our Lord Jesus Christ. And if they can have a temperature of love for Jesus, we can too. And that makes us saints, because we love Jesus. How many love Jesus? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on. Absolutely. I love Jesus too. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here, to share this great love. Now, people who are outside of the church picture don't understand this. They don't get it. They don't have this perception that we have. We are unique. We have this understanding of this relationship with God, and God calls us to be special people. You are special people. I am a special person in God's eyes. And God calls us by name. You know when he began to call us by name? At baptism. At baptism. Baptism is an essential event that happens in this church when God renames us and claims us as a part of his eternal kingdom. Baptism is really important. How many are baptized here? Everyone raise their hand. Amen. If we journey back into our lives, we need to define who we really are. Because once we're baptized, we grow in our faith, we grow in our standing, and we get this identity of ours. And a lot of it comes from our own mom and dad. Think about mom and dad today. For some of us, they've gone before us, haven't they? But we remember them, the gifts that mom and dad have given us. We were influenced by where we went to school where we went to Sunday school, where we went to church. How about our achievements? What have we achieved in life? What accomplishments have we made? What difference have we made in this world? God called us to be his children. And with it comes responsibility. How did we meet our spouse? And... When did we get married? And to remember that event in our life and how it influenced our life and impacted our life even today. How many children do we have? And as we watched them grow up, did we see the impact that we had upon our children as they grew? And today, as God's saints, what gives us strength and courage and hope in our daily life. What keeps us going? And if we think hard enough, we have to rely on God's direction and his encouragement and his hope that he gives us. And in the midst of this, it's all what God has done through and in us. Even as I stand here before you, 
I stand here by God's grace. I'm able to do this because of God's grace. And as we live our life, we're dependent on God's grace in our daily life. Well, in our story today of Lazarus, <clears throat> Mary and Martha find Jesus and tell him, uh, my brother's dying. And in the first part of this gospel lesson, they said, would you come, Jesus? Come on, please come and, uh, and heal Lazarus. And Jesus basically says, I hear what you're saying, but I'm busy here right now. I got some things I'm doing. Some people need me, but I will be there. Well, time, a few days go by, and Lazarus dies. He dies. And finally, Jesus arrives, and Mary and Martha say this. Jesus, if you had only come when we told you Lazarus wouldn't have died, and now he's dead, why did you wait? They were distraught. They knew that Jesus could do something, but they were distraught. Jesus says in verse 14, which is not in your reading today, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad that I am not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. And so the emotions are raining out in this episode of sadness and death, and did you pick up the little verse in here? about how Jesus reacted? Did you hear that? Jesus wept. What a magnificent short verse to understand that Jesus has compassion and sadness in our deaths too. He wept. But then he says, did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? If you believed, you would see the glory of God. In the next moment, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. He's been dead four days. And there's this, I mean, he's really dead. There's no faking it. He's really dead. Four days. And there's a concern, well, he's going to smell. It's not going to be a very nice thing. But Jesus again says, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you'll see the glory of God? Didn't I tell you that? And so he asks them to open the tomb. And he says, come forth. And Lazarus is alive. He's been raised from the dead. Now I just want to say this is, a, this is a glorious event. It's a wonderful event, but it shows us what? It shows us the power that Jesus has over death. Jesus has power over death. Believe that. Jesus has power over death. Death will not hold us. The victory of Jesus Christ on Easter is our victory. And he claims that for us saints. We belong to a world of life, not death. And that's what we celebrate. And Jesus proclaims that if we have faith, if we have faith in Jesus, we too shall live. And if we are living, it seems that we have a purpose here. And our purpose is to make this a better place in however way possible we do it. To make this a better place. So I heard your story from your leadership of how you rebuilt this church. What a wonderful story. This, this, this story has been told and needs to be retold. How the church burnt to the ground, but you raised it up again. Death did not hold this church down. You raised it up. And look it. We are here worshiping the Lord God Almighty. The power of this verse is alive in this congregation. It is alive in each and every one of us members. We believe in it. We worship the God who gives us life. And we have purpose and meaning today and tomorrow. I know you did something different in the beginning of the service. I had you wave to people. But we have more people watching 
besides those sitting here. But you, I want you to say yes. We want them to join us on Sunday morning. Yes? Yes. We want to be whole again. We want everybody to experience the joy of this resurrection faith that we proclaim. This story is a story that we're going to hear over and over again that it, the life of Jesus reigns in our life. And so we have built a legacy here at New Scandinavia Lutheran Church, a legacy of life, life coming out of ashes. It is the story of the resurrection. And we need to be proud to tell that story to our neighbors, to our friends. We rebuilt this church, and it's to the glory of God. In All Saints Sunday, we honor those that made this happen. We honor them. It is right to do that. It is good to do that, and we will continue to do, to do that. But today, God has put us in the right place at the right time with the right people to make sure that his mission and his ministry in this congregation will continue. And by baptism and the Holy Spirit, it will come about. I need to let you know God's plan is far bigger than we can imagine. And what he has for our future, you will behold. God's plan is bigger than what we can imagine. And so as your new interim pastor, let us continue the mission and the ministry that God has put in our lap here at New Scandinavia Lutheran Church. Amen? I didn't hear that. Amen. 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 May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us sing together. We continue now with our litany of remembrance, if you turn to that part in your bulletin. We will be reading 
the names. A candle will be lit for each one. Bell will be rung. And then for those families that are here with loved ones that we're remembering, a flower will be brought to you in your place where you're seated. Let's continue with our litany. Today we remember, we remember, O God, the countless saints of history who have blazed the trail of courage through time. We remember, O God, the tender touch of loved ones, the example of heroes, the healing words of comforts, the remarkable acts of fearless ones. We remember, O God, the gentle strength of grandmothers, the loyalty of friends, the kindness of strangers, the joy of children, the sacrifice of parents. We remember, O God, the supreme love of Jesus, the blessing of his spirit, the reminder of his words, the sharing of his suffering, the glory of his resurrection shown forth in the lives of his disciples, young and old, dead and living, articulate and silent, strange and familiar, brilliant and ordinary. We remember in every time and place the saints of God who have shown us the Lord since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us gather to remember and worship God with joy. Amen. Lord, we gather to give thanks for all the beloved saints from every time and place, but especially for those close to our congregation who now rest with you in eternal life. Today, we remember Donna Listig. Darlene Soley. Myrtle Severud. Bradley Nelson. Ray and Kim Matan. continue with the words of promise. Notice that we reread our lesson from Revelation 21 verses 1 through 5. Sisters and brothers, let us rejoice in the vision of John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The old heaven and the old earth and the sea had disappeared. Then I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending from God out of heaven, beautiful as a bride adorned for her husband. A great voice thundered from heaven. See, God is making God's home with mortals. God will live with them. 
they will be God's people. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. God promises, I am making all things new. <clears throat> this time I invite all of us to stand as you are able as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'm going to invite you to remain seated during our prayers. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. We give you thanks for the social ministries of the church around the world and for every ministry that heals, lifts up, and empowers those who are poor, oppressed, abused, abandoned, or ignored. Build up your ministries and prosper all works of mercy. Hear us, O God. We praise you for the bounty of creation and a world of abundance. Protect the earth from all who would devour its resources. Create and strengthen sustainable communities who honor your creation with loving care. Hear us, O God. We give you thanks for leaders who seek peace for all nations and leads efforts towards greater justice. Accompany all who suffer the wounds of war with veterans who carry battle scars from the past and all who promote peace today. Hear us, O oh God. We praise you for plentiful harvests and generous hearts. Send needed resources and caring neighbors to all those in need. We pray for refugees and orphans, widows, those unemployed, those suffering abuse, and all who are in need. Restore to health all who are sick in any way, especially April, Gary, Lonnie, and Kevin. Hear us, O oh God. We praise you for missionaries who share your love in new communities and bring compassion for all. Continue to raise up missionaries for lives of service in your name. Hear us, O oh God. We give you thanks for the saints of this congregation who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us. Donna, Darlene, Myrtle, Bradley, Ray and Kim. Comfort all who grieve and lead us by their example until you gather us in your heavenly home. Hear us, O oh God. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, I, I turned my 
Is this, is this on? Yeah. I talked with your leadership and I said, we're still a little bit in this COVID time. And we talked about how to do communion and how to take offering. And I really feel uh, it's worked very well that if we keep our offering plates in the back, and as you come, you can drop your offering in, or as you leave your church service, leave your offering there. And I think we'll continue to do that. Uh, it's less invasive passing the plate where everybody is touching it. You understand where I'm coming from? So I, uh, I want to keep everybody safe and sound. Communion, which we'll have, um, we're, we will have you come forward to receive the bread and the wine. If you feel vulnerable because of your health, please take the goblet with the wafer that's in the back of the church. If you feel safe to do that, please be reminded you can do that, okay? But um, if you are, are willing, come up to receive the bread and the wine. I'll be sure and wash my hands with, because I give you the bread. And then when you receive the cup, you'll be able to return uh, the cup. I think there's a place back there. I didn't see it, but there's some place. You, there it is. Okay. You can uh, dis dispose of your cup. So uh, we're not washing the cups. You hear that? We're disposing them, which again is, is a, 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 a health safety measure. So we're engaged still in, with COVID and we want everybody safe and sound and healthy. We don't want you to get sick. And uh, if we're doing something wrong, you know, let us or the leadership know, all right? Uh, you know, we're open, we're open to hear concerns for everybody, but uh, we want everybody to stay healthy as long as they can. So anyway, thank you. Thank all of you who are watching this service, stream, streaming it for your gifts, your gifts and your offerings. Sustain this mission and ministry. It is a blessing what you have accomplished. And the future blessing is still in your hands. We, we want to do God's work. And your continued uh, gifts support uh, the ministry and the mission of this congregation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you are giving. Unbelievably, thank you. Amen. We're going to continue with our order of communion, and we will stand, but only as you're able. I want to make that clear. <clears throat> Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine, and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened the way to everlasting life. May heaven and earth be filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us
Let us join together and pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is now ready. You may be seated. given for you.
Please stand for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Blessed Jesus, at this table, you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 